Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Shannon. Hi Shannon. Hi Bob. And we're going to see a, a real kind of unusual rig you've got here. Uh, what, what do you call this? Well, that's the number one question I get is, what is, what it? is that? So it's a Ford Econoline. It's a fiberglass body that they make in, they have three locations in New York and one in Toronto, Canada. And it's a fiberglass body that they make with a 3D CAD software. Um, so they're able to kind of visualize it before they do the build. Well, I bet it really gives you some pretty good gas mileage. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very aerodynamic. I think we calculated at about 16 miles to the gallon. Which is good for a big, tall rig. Right. And how long have you been on the road? I left just before Christmas, but I plan on being out until at least June. Okay, so a pretty long time. Right. And then do you, are you keeping a home base in New York? Is that where you're from? Uh, no, I'm no. from Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, that's home base. That's where my parents have a log cabin there. And uh, when I'm home, I do a lot of in-home dog sitting. So even when I'm home, I'm never really home because I kind of live out of a suitcase when I'm not living out of the van. So I do in-home dog care. So I go from house to house in the area. I've built up about 10 to 12 regular clients at home. And that does uh, pays pretty well, doesn't it? It does pretty good. So you get their home and then uh, to stay in while they're gone, because right. that's the way it works, and then they pay you a little bit above that. Right. Well, that's that's a pretty sweet gig. Yeah. I worked for like grocery delivery companies. I used to do a lot of nannying and elder care. So kind of side hustle jobs. And then I do get a little bit of money every month as a disabled military veteran. Oh, well, thank you for your service. Appreciate that. So tell us a little bit about the van. What year is it? Um, so it's a 2007. I bought it with 162,000 miles on it, and it currently has about 183,000. Um, it was used as a plumbing utility vehicle, so it was mostly highway miles going from Minneapolis to Chicago back and forth to haul equipment. And um, the company kind of just wanted to get rid of it because they were upgrading to the box trucks. So they kind of just let it go. They were asking 6000 My dad talked them down to 5300 Wow. That seems like a really screaming deal. Right. My dad found it on Craigslist. And when he sent me the listing, I just kind of laughed. And I said, I don't know. I said, it looks like I'm going to be driving a spaceship. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> and so he went and test drove it before I did. And then I went a day or two later. And, you know, it drove fine, but I just couldn't quite get the vision. Um, but I went home that night and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So uh, a day or two later, I just went back and bought it and drove it home. I bet it's pretty nice inside. Let's take a look. Well, it's first off, it's really unusual the way it opens, isn't it? Right. That allows them to put anything in there. Uh -huh. And it's wider than most. How wide is it? You know, it's about eight feet wide, um, uh -huh. including the bubbles out on the side. And you have a pass-through, so right. you always have a way in or out, yep. even if you don't want to open this door in the brain or something. Yeah. So that's nice. And you're, did you do the build? My dad pretty much did all of it. Wow. <laughs> I was too busy working to pay for it, and um, you know we would just buy a couple things at a time, and it took him about a year to do the build. He did a beautiful, beautiful job. Wow. I don't know if I mentioned that it's unicell, but within unicell, it's specifically an aerocell. Boy, he did a super nice job in here. Is he a carpenter? Uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades. He um, he worked for a, he did quality control at an electrical company, um, but he's just kind of been doing different projects his entire life. He built a Bugatti kit car when he was 21, and just kind of kept going from there. Um, his big hobby back home is model toy trains that are in the backyard. So they're at home. His main hobby is he builds the bridges and the trestles and oh it's like through a fish pond. This kind of took him away from that while he was working on the build. Nice. Boy, it's so beautiful. He did just a fantastic job though. I'm really impressed. Being just like half a year at a time. Right. seems like you got everything you need in here. I, I live pretty comfortably in yeah. here. So yeah, I just have the stove top that fits right into the countertop. Um, the stove and my refrigerator and the furnace, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, those three things all go off of propane. So I have two 20 pound pro ta propane tanks under here. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, um, if I'm not running the furnace and even cooking twice a day, I can get about one month off of one propane tank. Wow. That's very good. Which is pretty good. Um, and then this is just kind of my silverware cooking drawer where yeah. I keep all the, the utensils and just kind of miscellaneous items. Mm -hmm. um, the sink my mom actually found on Craigslist. Uh, I think I think I actually purchased the sink before the van. It just seemed like a really good deal. 
Um, so I have the sink there. Again, more storage. Just I do a lot of cooking. I enjoy cooking. Um, so this is where I keep uh, the pots and the pans and the cleaning stuff and the storage containers and all that kind of miscellaneous stuff. And do you have the uh, tanks underneath, or is it just drain out? I do. I have uh, three. I have three tanks underneath. I have uh, the fresh water can hold twenty two gallons, and then the black and gray each hold twenty. Wow, that's very nice. So he had to actually crawl under there and insert them and um, get brackets to hold them up. Right. And up here, here's your fridge. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's a it's a three way fridge. Um, I don't have a ton of solar, so I just run it off of the propane. And then this was just kind of a awkward amount of space that was left over. So mm -hmm. he just put a shelf in the middle. It's where I keep wine and some extra food and, and things like that. So this is where I keep um, coffee stuff, tea, different powders. I do smoothies and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. And did he put the windows in? He did, yep. He, we found the windows on eBay. And if you notice, there's actually two different windows. Um, oh. <laughs> I had a rock fly up and shatter this one. And I could not find uh, the same window anywhere. It's just, I couldn't find that size. So I had to order the one that slides open versus flips open. Mm -hmm. And this must be your bathroom up here. Uh, yeah. And got a, the pass through. Got a, yeah. Got a little toilet. Again, it's a, it's a regular RV toilet. It's a, um, it's a Dometic RV toilet. And not a shower. No shower. Um, I, I'm fine going a week without a shower. I do have a Planet Fitness membership and I, you know, find the random laundromat here or there in different towns. I do a lot of backpacking, so I'm pretty comfortable not showering for long yeah, amounts of time. Yeah. And more storage over here? Yeah, so this is kind of my primary closet area. Um, this has changed a little bit in the last six years since the van build was done, but I found this that just kind of fit in perfectly. So it's sort of um, medicine cabinet and toiletries and things like that. I do have the overhead storage and that just kind of ends up being sort of a catch-all for extra clothes and toiletries and some of the RV stuff I need. This is the main electrical area. Um, the fuse boxes, he has them all labeled, kind of what does what. Mm -hmm. And I do have the, I have the Renogy control pan controller. I have two 100 watt solar panels on top. And then as of about two weeks ago, um, I got in contact with this awesome guy named Solar Rob. He actually reached out to me through an e-bike group because I didn't know how I was going to be able to charge my e-bike because um, I don't have 110. So I ended up going with the Renogy 700 watt mm -hmm. inverter. And it works like a charm. It charges my bike in about three to four hours. Boy, it's sure neat and clean. Everything's <laughs> put kind of tucked away and not just, you know, hanging out in here and there. You got it really nice organized. Thank you. And so you have a regular RV furnace? I do, yeah. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. It's So the, the furnace does go off of propane, but it does also have to go off of uh, 12 volts. So that uses a little bit of the power coming from the solar. But I, I really haven't been using it no. much down here. Yeah. So the van is actually insulated with a spray foam kit and Reflectix nice. um, on the sidewalls and the ceiling, but not the floor. And then I joke that this is kind of my guest closet right now. I just have extra stuff in it. But um, without even trying, it just happened to be the exact size of a carry-on suitcase. Wow. So I've actually had friends fly out and meet me in different in different locations and I tell them, you know, you're welcome to join me as long as you can get everything you need for a week or whatever in a carry-on suitcase. The bed setup has actually changed um, since the van build was done six years ago. I have an uncle back home that does upholstery and we actually had, I used to have two mattresses in here that were kind of measured off of a camping pad, camping mattress pad. So I had a, a back mattress and um, sleeping one so I could oh. do kind of one person up, one down if I'd have a friend with or something. But you know, they just, they didn't, they didn't agree with my back. So I had to pull my, my twin size mattress out here and I sleep a lot better on this. Well, this must be storage in here, back. Right, yep, that, you access that through the back. This is just, again, more storage up here. So like I said, I like to do a lot of cooking and this is, oh. just gives me a little flip up table here. Nice. Mm. So what I do is I do all the cooking and then I'll lay out different food bars. I've done taco bars and kind of make your own scrambled egg and omelets and things like that. And all our friends just kind of come up and get their food and keep it outside, keep the mess outside. And underneath that, um, you'll notice some of the different plugins. It does have the capability to plug into 110. So if I'm at like a paid campground, mm -hmm. which I never do, I've used that once in six years. Oh, so you've been part-timing for six years. Right. Wow, that's a long time. So why are you traveling so much? 
Um, you know, the, the travel bug bit me when I was about 18. <laughs> so I, uh, I joined the military out of high school. And with that, I, I just love the process of meeting different people from all walks of life. That led me into getting into uh, traveling. And with and without the military, I out of the military, I decided to go teach English in South Korea and met people from all over the world doing that. From there, I ended up traveling to, I think, 26 different countries. And I knew I wanted to kind of settle down back in the States, but not really settle down in one location. So that's what led me to your book. Oh. How to Live in a Van. Yeah. <laughs> you are my inspiration. My dad and I read your book cover to cover and took all kinds of notes and made highlights and whatnot. So that was about six, six and a half years ago we picked up your book. And at the same time that I wanted to get into the van life, I became obsessed with uh, backpacking. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, I guess you could call it my, uh, my spare bedroom. Your so, home away from home. My home away from home. So if I were to ever have like a breakdown or a friend or two come visit me and we needed an extra uh, space to sleep, I would just pull this out and set up my tent um, rather than having to check into like an expensive hotel. And have you done the Pacific Crest Trail? I have. I've done oh, most wow. of it. There was wild, wild, some wildfires broke out, mm. um, so I wasn't able to take the border and I had to skip most of Oregon. But I went back last summer and did the Wonderland Trail. And then the year before that, I was um, lucky enough to snag a spot with Warrior Expedition. Um, they're an organization that outfits veterans on the Appalachian Trail. So they outfitted 10 of us and we all kicked off together. And over the 2,200 miles, we were set up with uh, very generous sponsors and they would take us into their home and they would cook for us and let us do our laundry and take us to the grocery store and do all the town chores and then just drive us back to trail. So that was a really great way to kind of break. I'm a bit of an introvert, so that kind of got me to break out of my shell a little bit and, you know, get to know different people and travel that way for almost six months. Did you do the entire Appalachian Trail then? I did. Oh, wow. So two of the three big ones. Right. Yeah. Just the CDT if I want to do all big three. Not many people do all three. Not right. many people do one, much right. less it's two. It's pretty hard on the body. So it I'm is. kind of taking a break from it for now, but yeah. I might get back into it again. So my dad used four different types of wood in here. Um, the windows are framed with pine. Most of the, like the bed wood, this is made out of hickory, which was actually leftover flooring wood when my dad was putting in a new wood floor in their house. Oh, and then the piece that's kind of behind you there that's curved over the top, this is made out of oak. The paneling, this is just kind of a cheap paneling wood that we found at Menards. Uh, we made many trips to and from Menards <laughs> during the build. <laughs> It's actually, uh, it's pliable. So he was actually able to just bend it as he was screwing it to the ceiling mm -hmm. and curve it like that. And then the, the sticker back here, this is just, it's just a sticker. It was a little bit tricky for him because he had to, just to get the pieces to fit together. So he had to sit there with an X-Acto knife just to get the pieces to fit together. And then I guess I'll just point out this picture. This was, this was drawn uh, at, at the Maiden Voyage uh, about six years ago down in the Mark Twain Forest in Missouri. And my dad and I went on that trip together just to test out the van and for me to practice driving it because it was a little bit bigger than what I was used to. And um, it was for a, for a fundraiser. So an artist put um, his talent into the fundraiser and my dad put all his tickets in there and we ended up winning. So we had a sketch of the van. As you'll notice, my solar panels ended up getting about halfway blocked from the sun when the back door is up. To unblock them, my dad just made this board that fits in here. So that way the solar panels aren't blocked and you still have a way to get in and out of the van. Nice. When I go fill my tanks, just roll right. in and just fill the tanks that way. Um, this is to plug in to power. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice just some weird things on the outside. This is a vent for the refrigerator. You can't really see it too well, but this is for my gray tank. Um, so the, <laughs> the thing that's a little bit challenging is I have a tank on each side. This is the vent for the furnace. Well, basically it's class B. So how much solar do you have on the roof? Um, I just have two 100 watt solar panels on top. And, that's... and then I have two deep cycle AGM batteries in the electrical area. Mm -hmm. And then I, Recently got the battery isolator so that they charge while I'm driving. It's been more than enough. I really don't use a lot of electricity because of 
the fact that I have propane. Right. And you know, I'm not, I'm not like a TV watcher. I don't do a lot of the stuff that requires electricity. I'm more, I'd rather be outside. So uh, do you mind telling us how much you've got invested in your home? Uh, no, so the van itself was $5,300 that we talked the plumbing company down to. And then the total cost of the materials inside were uh, roughly about $6,000 for, for everything, the solar, the batteries, the furnace, the fridge, and all the different materials used in here. But I don't think that includes the cost of the beer that I provided for my dad while he was doing the build. So that might not quite be within that $11,000 calculation. <laughs> Payment. you got to pay for labor. Right. And so this is your, um, your electric bike and how you're carrying it. Uh, I got this just about two months ago. So it only has about 80 miles on it. But, of course, I had to go with blue to match the van. <laughs> and <laughs> I went back and forth. I, initially, I actually wanted a scooter, but I didn't know how I was going to mount it to the van. So I ended up going with the XP Lite just because I like that it's so compact and I can fit it right in this box, yeah. which goes right in the back of the van. And it only, only weighing 45 pounds, I can, I can, I'm not going to do it now, but I can actually lift this entire box up and just throw it in the van. Right. And then I ended up getting kind of a heavy duty one on wheels so I can Good just idea. wheel it wherever I want. Well, Shannon, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. Your, you and your dad just did a remarkable job. It is beautiful. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So, folks, if you got any good ideas out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.